In this video, we're going to focus on how to add HTML entities or more specifically the Unicode of those HTML entities on the Y ticks here. You can see here we have these currencies here, but they are not standard currency characters. They are a special Unicode or HTML entity. So let's start to look how we can do this. So let's start to look how to add the HTML entity or Unicode currency symbols in a in the ticks in the Y skill in ChartJS. First thing what we need is we need to go to chartjs3.com getting started this specific link here so we can get the border template and this link you can find as well in the description box. So once you're on here scroll down and copy this chunk of code here. Copy this and if you want to understand this code watch this video here. Paste that in there. Cut out the title and then I'll do like this. Save, refresh. All right. So now what I want to do is I want to maximize the size of this and then we're going to explore the Unicodes. Let's save this 80% with, all right, there we are. So what is very important because we're talking about HTML entities and Unicode and basically they're both different, but they're same at the same or same as well. And what I mean by that is the symbol itself will be in HTML code, but we need to convert this, of course, into a Unicode or every currency symbol has a Unicode, which is re read by JavaScript. And there is also a matching HTML entity for that. To make sure that we understand and read Unicode, we must have this meta chart set UTF-8 ready. So this is very important to have so it will understand it. So what I'm going to do here is just basically put in here a item and then you will see this. So if I'm going to say here, uh, let's do one of the symbols is a Philippine Peso. So we're going to say um, ampersand hashtag number eight three six nine and then semicolon. This here creates the Philippine Peso symbol. If I save this, refresh, you can see here we have the Philippine Peso symbol. This symbol is what we call an HTML entity. But at the same time, there's also what we call, <coughs> oh, sorry, there's also what we call, we also have what we call a, a Unicode. And a Unicode just works slightly different. However, this cannot be read properly in JavaScript. So if I copy this, we can scroll down here. And of course, there might be some tricks. But anyway, let's start to work on adding the symbol in here. And you will see exactly what I'm talking about. So I'm going to use here, uh, in the Y scale, we're going to say ticks. And in the ticks here, what I want here is the callback. And this callback functionality allows us to customize the tick labels here. So we're going to change them and we want to have eventually the peso symbol, the Philippine peso symbol at, in the very front. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to say your value, that's the argument, the index, and then the values. Then we create a function error expression and then we can put it in like that. There we are. So if I do just a simple console log, We'll see here the value, if I save this, refresh, it will disappear here. And all right, this is just automatically, don't worry about that. But this here, the ticks are gone, why? It shows this value here, like this, and of course it will calculate this. It shows here, but it doesn't draw here because we don't return it. So if I redo here a return value, it will again show any value that we have. So. What we have more is the index, which is basically self-explanatory from zero all the way to nine. So it shows here the length of 10 items of our index. And that's fine because there are 10 lines here or 10 uh, labels. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. The values itself is also quite interesting because it basically shows all the values matching with that. And you can see here you get an array. Make sure you always have return on. If you don't have this, it will not show the array values. This is a, that's an important one. We can see here the value, the label, and then there's still some additional items, although we won't be needing those. We can ignore that. But the label and the value are now identical like that. So what we can do now is if we want to say here, we want to put in the value of the currency symbol. And you might say, all right, if I just copy this, and then what we can do here is what do a, uh, template literals I'm going to say here this variable like that or sorry this uh, this command 
And then we say here dollar sign curly braces value. Save this, then refresh. And then look what happens. It will see it as an actual item. It will see it as an actual text that, that it expects. So we don't want this. So maybe we could do it like this. Uh, but it still doesn't show it really. So if I save this like that, doesn't work. And if we do here a dollar sign, maybe we will have to do it like this. Put it in like that. Save. Refresh. You can see it just doesn't work. This doesn't recognize it. And the reason why is we need to work with the Unicode. For the Unicode, what we're going to do is the back tick. Oh, sorry, backslash. It's very important. And then we're going to say Unicode. And then we're going to put in the command number two, zero. And have B, capitalized B, number one. Very important is that every character or symbol in HTML entities has a matching uh, Unicode command or uh, code, basically. So if I save this, then I refresh, you can see here now, we get the Philippine Peso symbol shown nicely in here. And this is very important because with the dollar sign it's quite easy, but you can imagine with different items, if we do dollar sign like this and save that, we can put it even attached to it, no problem. You can see we'll attach it, we'll put a space between there, say, refresh, that works. But if you do a Philippine Peso or maybe the Euro sign, the uh, Turkish Lira, uh, any other symbol that you want that requires a Unicode, in that case, you have to do it like this. So if you enjoyed this video and maybe you want, besides this, you want to do it on other places, for example, here or the title or the legend, in that case, I'm going to recommend you this one here where you can create you know, how to use the UTF-8 and UTF-16 special characters in charges. We will placing them in other locations as well. So highly recommended to do that one. You can see how you can use that even more deeper.